In this video, we're going to complete example three, and we're going to factorize the following monic quadratics. And in case you've forgotten, a monic quadratic is basically an expression where you've got some pronumeral, such as x to the power of two. And the reason we call it a monic quadratic, monic actually means one. And you'll notice that where we have x squared, there's no number to the left of it, which technically means there's a one there. So all these quadratics will have a one next to the pronumeral that has the square. So in order to explain how to factorize monic quadratics, we need to go back a step to where we learned to expand, giving a result that was a monic quadratic. So what's a good example of this? Well, let's start with expanding x plus 3 and x plus 4. Now, if you've forgotten how to expand an expression like this, you need to look back at some previous lessons I did on expanding. Anyway, what we do is we look at the first set of brackets. We can see we've got two terms, x and 3. And we write the x down first with the second set of brackets next to it, with the x plus 4 in brackets next to it. And then, after taking x, we take the 3, or positive 3, and we write the same second set of brackets next to it, x plus 4. We then expand this, and we expand by multiplying the term in front of the brackets by each term inside the brackets. So first off, we're going to go x times x, which is x squared, and then x times 4, which is 4x, and then 3 times x, which gives us plus 3x, and then finally 3 times 4, which gives us plus 12. And then we need to collect the like terms in the middle. 4x plus 3x is 7x. So we get the expression x squared plus 7x plus 12. As a result, we get a monic quadratic. Now, if we know that expanding this expression results in this monic quadratic, then what that means is if we were to factorize the following monic quadratic, x squared plus 7x plus 12, then as a result, we would get x plus 3, x plus 4. Now, that's really easy to factorize when you've got the answer over here to the left. So how do we factorize this when we don't have the answer in front of us? Well, let's look at our expansion. Let's look at the first expression that we started with. And let's look at the final result after expanding this expression. Can you spot the shortcut? Well, if you look at the middle term, it had a 7. And if you look at the last term, it had a 12. And if you look closely, the 3 and the 4 can make both 7 and 12. If we add the 3 and the 4, if we go 3 plus 4, we get 7. If we multiply the 3 and the 4, we go 3 times 4, we get 12. So what we find is that these two numbers will add to give the number in the middle term and multiply to give the number in the last term. So let's use this knowledge that we've gained to factorize the following three expressions. So we'll start with question A. We've got a number in the middle term and a number for the last term. And we're looking for two numbers that add 
to make the middle term and multiply to make the last term. What are those two numbers? Well, it's 2 and 3. 2 plus 3 is 5, and 2 times 3 is 6. So how do we use these two numbers to come up with a factorized version of this expression? Well, it's quite simple. I just have my two sets of brackets, and I go x plus 2 and x plus 3. All right, we'll move on to question B. It's going to get a little trickier this time because my middle term has a negative 10. So we have to take that minus sign into consideration here. The two numbers still need to add to make this negative 10. My last number is a positive 1. It's positive 24. And once again, they still need to multiply to make positive 24. It's just a little trickier because we've got negatives involved. And quite often what I do is I focus on the multiplication first. I go, okay, what, what kind of numbers multiply to make 24? Uh, 3 times 8, 2 times 12, and 4 times 6. And then I think to myself, well, it's got to have something to do with 4 and 6. Because I know that 4 times 6 makes 24, and 4 plus 6 makes 10. Except the problem is I need it to make negative 10. And when I do that, I think, okay, well, actually, I think it's going to be negative 4 and negative 6. Because negative 4 added to negative 6 does make negative 10. And negative 4 times negative 6 does make positive 24 because of the double negative. So I found my two numbers now. My last step is really easy. This time it was an A instead of X, so I need to make sure it's got A in each set of brackets. And since my numbers are negative, I'm going to put minus 4 down and minus 6. So the only thing that made question B a little different to A is A had two pluses. This time I've got two minuses. Okay, we'll now move on to question C, which I assume is probably going to be my, my hardest question. So I've got two numbers here. I've got a positive 4, and I know it needs to add to make positive 4. And I've got negative 45. It's got to multiply to make negative 45. So the rules don't change each time. So just like question B, I'm going to focus on my 45 or negative 45. And I'm just going to think, what, what sort of numbers multiply to make 45? Uh, 5 times 9 is really the only thing I can, I can think of. 5 and 9. 5 times 9 makes 45. And when I look at these two numbers, I reckon they could make 4 as well. I, I, I could make it by going 9 minus 5 to get 4. And I've just come up with my two numbers, 9 and negative 5. Because 9 added to negative 5 does make positive 4. And 9 times negative 5 does make negative 45 because I had one negative and one positive. So now my last step is nice and easy. I know I've got x this time, so I put x in each set of brackets. I've got a positive 9, so I write plus 9. And I've got a negative 5, so I write minus 5. Now before we conclude this video, I'd like to point something out that's really important here. This technique will always work for monic quadratics. So they are quadratics that have no number to the left of the x squared or the a squared, meaning that there's technically a 1 there, as we mentioned earlier. So you can just imagine, if you get a quadratic that's not a monic, let's say it has a uh, 2 in front of your x squared, 
then this technique does not work. Anyway, that concludes our video on example 3. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.